The most inspirational show I went to, I saw um, Paul McCartney at Anfield, and as a Liverpool fan and a massive Viva fan, it was like, it was one of those shows where you just, he didn't play any of his new stuff, he played one new song. And Do then not play the new stuff, the I was there, it was a great show, fantastic, Dan had a little tear in Important lesson as well, always play the hits. Always play the hits. Yeah. That's something we've taken, stuff. that's what we've taken from the show. Don't no play one, the new stuff. No one cares about the new stuff. No one cares about play the new stuff. Play the ones people know. Play the ones people like. When we're in the studio, that the sound and kind of vibes we tend to go for, they're very... Um, when we take songs in, they're quite rudimentary and structured, like, they're quite basic. It's, it's, they're all there, but not necessarily sonically. We like buggering about with field recordings. We like, we like oscillators that are out of time with the music, mainly because we can't keep them in time because we can't hear them. A lot of people came to see it after we released our first album and said, I enjoyed it, but I really enjoyed your life a lot more. So we kind of took that on board and we just made all the time in the studio as close as a gig environment as possible. You know, we were just always playing like loads of music and constantly drinking, so it felt like we were actually out of venue. And, you know, that's, in a serious note, that we, we'd, get, we'd get people in to kind of watch us as well. Because we we're all, I think we're all a bit, we're all show offs at heart, so we perform a lot better if people are actually there. There's a song called Untitled by Smashing Pumpkins, which they, I think they released when they kind of crudely parted way with the label. And um, yeah, I wish I'd have written that. It's an absolutely fantastic song. But it's that kind of fuzz wall of sound and reverb from the guitars mixed in with the most weirdest synthesizers that you can't afford, yeah. reinforcing this wall of sound. And there's, there's a song called Real Love, which is by them, just the same session. And that's just, you don't know what's going on, it just sounds like echo, and then these phantasmagorical lyrics just piercing through with these <laughs> kind of vocals. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, like Untitled, it's, it's a mix between acoustics, acoustic put through tape players, 60 strats, reverb, uh, just everything that you would want sonically in a song as far as I'm concerned, that anyone has ever committed to record, ever. The best guitar solo ever, and I'm not a guitar solo, playing. but it's... It's serious, improvised madness. I nearly cried when I saw him at the O2. <laughs> it was just, ah, oh, you can bend that string so far. It's like a violin. But yeah, that's why I like the song. <laughs> I wish I'd written Disco 2000 by Bill. Because that is, without a doubt, one of my favourite songs ever. I also think it's one of the saddest songs ever. So I always think it's one of the saddest songs ever. When, you, when it comes out at a club and the guitarist starts, you always get really excited. And then I actually listen to the lyrics and halfway through, I just feel incredibly nostalgic and it's those songs where you can listen to it and want to dance and also kind of want to cry at the same time. I think that's that's the most powerful kind of music. You get a massive come down from like from shows. It's really that hard. Tours as well. The first week back from like a month in Europe or like coming back from Japan, it's like you can, there's no there's no worse than low than going back to our like damp house with the mice after flying back from Japan. Yeah. I've never had heroin. I'll preface a statement by saying this, but I can't imagine like anything like that is even close to kind of like, the addiction you get when you play live. Like, when we, if we ever have to stop, I'm going to be. Absolute wreck, I think.